In this video, we'll be going over compositions of functions. We'll talk about what they are and how to compute the outputs of compositions when tables of values are given. A composition is essentially an operation that we can perform on two functions to give us a new function. If we have two functions, f and g, and we want to perform the composition operation, we denote it with a little circle between the two functions. Remember that this composition operation creates a new function, which we call f composed with g. So what does this new function do, and how is it related to f and g? Well, the way this composition function is defined is that when we input an x into this new function, the output is computed by doing f of g of x, meaning we're taking the output g of x and plugging it in as the input to the f function. This concept can be made more clear by looking at a diagram. Remember that when we first introduced functions, we thought of them as these little machines that took in inputs and gave us outputs. So if we want to draw a picture for our function f composed with g, we can draw a little box, label it f composed with g. We have two funnels, one for the input, one for the output. Now to understand what this composition does, what we want to do is think about what happens when we input some number x into this machine. Now if we were to open up this machine, essentially what we would see is something like this. Inside the f composed with g machine, there is actually two machines inside. We have the G machine, and then we also have the F machine. So what happens when we plug in an input X into this composition? Well, our input X first goes into the G machine, and when we plug it into the G machine, G will perform some operations on that input X and give us an output. The output of the G function when we input X is what we call G of X. Now what happens next is this output g of x gets plugged into the f function. So now f will perform some operations on this input and give us some output. And the output of the f function when I input g of x is what we call f of g of x. So all of this is what's happening inside the f composed with g function. So when I input x into this f composed with g function, what comes out is f of g of x. So again, if I plug anything into this composition, the input first goes into the g function, and the g function will perform some operations and give us some output. That output then gets plugged into the f function. f will then perform some operations on that input and give us some output. This final output is the output of the composition of our two functions. When we look at the formula for the composition of the two functions, we see that the g of x is plugged inside the f function. So for that reason, the g function is sometimes called the inner function, and the f function is called the outer function. One last thing to note is that the domain of f composed with g consists of the x values such that the output g of x is in the domain of the f function. This means that we're looking at the x values that we can first plug into the g function, but then also that the output from the g function is something that we can plug into the f function. Now that we have an idea of what a composition of function is, let's look at an example. In our example here, we're given the tables of values of two functions f and g. On the left here, we have the table of values for the function f, and on the right here, we have the table of values for the function g. We're asked to evaluate the following. In example a, we want to evaluate f composed with g of 2, meaning we want to find the output of f composed with g when we input 2. By definition, the output is f of g of 2. When we have an expression like this, we want to work our way from the inside out. Start by computing what g of 2 is, and then once we have that, take that number and plug it into the f function and see what the output is. So what is g of 2? Let's go to our g table, and when we look at the input 2, 
we see that the corresponding output is 1. So g of 2 is equal to 1. Now what I want to do with this is I want to take that number and plug it into the f function. So let's now figure out what's f of 1. Go to our table of values for f, and we see that when we plug in 1 into the f function, we get the output 2. So f of 1 is equal to 2. And this here is f composed with g of 2. Let's also think about this example in terms of our diagram. Remember, when we do the composition f composed with g, the g function comes first, and then we have the f function. So when we do f composed with g of 2, we're inputting 2 into the g function first. And we look at our table of values for g, we see that when we input 2, we get the output 1. So when we plug in 2 into the g function, 1 comes out. What we're going to do is we're going to take that 1, we're going to plug it into the f function. Now let's look at our table of values for f. When 1 goes into the f function, 2 comes out. So the output here is 2. So that's why 2 at the end here is the answer to our composition. Let's take a look at another example. This time we want to look at f composed with g of 3, meaning when we input 3 into the composition, what is the corresponding output? And remember, by definition, this is f of g of 3. Again, we want to work our way from the inside out. So start by figuring out what g of 3 is. Let's go to our table of values for g. When we input 3 into the g function, 4 comes out. So g of 3 is equal to 4. And what I want to do is I want to take that and plug it into the f function. So now let's go to our table of values for f. When we input 4 into the f function, 1 comes out. So our final answer here is 1. That is f composed with g of 3. If we think about this in terms of our diagram, we're saying we're plugging in 3 into our g function first. And when we plug in 3 into the g function, 4 comes out. And plugging 4 into the f function, we see that 1 comes out at the end. That's why 1 is the output of the composition when we plug in 3. In example C here, let's try to evaluate f composed with g of 4. By definition, this is f of g of 4. Let's start by figuring out what g of 4 is. So looking at our table for g, when we input 4, the output is 9. So let's replace that g of 4 with 9. And now we want to do f of 9. Now, when we look at the table for f, we notice that there is no entry for when the input x is equal to 9. So f of 9 would be undefined, which also means that the composition f composed with g of 4 is undefined. So here we would say that 4 is not in the domain of f composed with g because g of 4 is not in the domain of f. When we do compositions of functions, it doesn't always have to be f composed with g's. We can do other compositions. So let's take a look at some examples like that. In these next examples, we're going to be looking at the composition g composed with f. When we do a composition, the function on the left is the outer function, the function on the right is the inner function. When we do g composed with f of 2, by definition, this means we're doing g of f of 2. We see that the f is placed inside the g function. So when we evaluate this, we work our way from the inside out. First, we figure out what f of 2 is. So let's go to our table for f. When the input is 2, the corresponding output is 5. So f of 2 is equal to 5. Now what we want to do is compute g of that number, g of 5. So go to our table for g. When the input is 5, we see that the corresponding output is 16. So the result here is 16. So when we do g composed with f of 2, we get 16 as the output. Let's take a look at the diagram for this composition. So when we do g composed with f, the f function goes first, and then we follow it up with the g function. When we input the number 2 into the f function, we got 5 as the output, and so we plug 5 into the g function, and we got 16 as the final answer. 
Now, when we compare g composed with f of 2 with f composed with g of 2, we notice that we get different answers. So it turns out that the order in which you do the composition matters. In general, f composed with g is different than g composed with f. Next, let's try example e, where we have g composed with f of 3. So by definition, this is g of f of 3. So again, we start with the inside. Let's figure out what f of 3 is. So let's go to our table for f. When the input is 3, we see that the corresponding output is 4. So f of 3 is equal to 4. And next, what we want to do is we want to compute g of that number. To figure out what g of 4 is, let's go to our table for g. When the input is 4, we see that the output is 9. So g of 4 is equal to 9. And that is the answer to our composition. We have one last one here, g composed with f of 4. So this is g of f of 4. We'll start by computing f of 4. So go to your table for f. When the input is 4, the corresponding output is 1. So f of 4 is equal to 1. And now we want to take that number, plug it into the g function. So go to your table for g. And when the input is 1, we see that the corresponding output is 0. So g of 1 is equal to 0, which means that g composed with f of 4 is equal to 0. Now functions can even be composed with themselves. In example g, we want to evaluate f composed with f of 3. Since we have f on both sides of the composition symbol, f is both the inner function and the outer function. So f composed with f of 3 is f of f of 3. So this means we're going to take 3, we're going to plug it into the f function, then take the result and plug it into the f function again. So let's start with the first time. f of 3, we look at our table for f. When the input is 3, we see that the output is 4. So f of 3 is equal to 4. And now what we want to do is do f of that number. So to evaluate f of 4, we look at our table for f. When the input is 4, the corresponding output is 1. So f of 4 is equal to 1, which means that f composed with f of 3 is 1. In example h, we have g composed with g of 3. So this time, g is both the inner and outer function. So this is g of g of 3. So we're going to take the input 3. We're going to plug it into the g function first, take that output, and plug it into the g function again. So let's start by computing g of 3. So let's look at our table for g. When the input is 3, the corresponding output is 4. So g of 3 is equal to 4. And now what we want to do is we want to take that number, plug it into g again. So go to our table for g. When the input is 4, the corresponding output is 9. So g of 4 is equal to 9, which means that g composed with g of 3 is 9. Lastly, we have g composed with g of 4. By definition, this is g of g of 4. So we're going to take 4, we're going to plug it into the g function, take its output, and then plug it into the g function again. When we take 4, we plug it into the g function the first time, we see that g of 4 gives us 9. So g of 4 here will replace with a 9. Now we want to take g of that number. But we notice that in our table for g, there is no entry for when the input x is equal to 9. So our g of 9 here would be undefined, which means that g composed with g of 4 is also undefined. And that just means that 4 is not in the domain of g composed with g, since g of 4 is not in the domain of g. So in this video, we learned what a composition of two functions is, and we learned how to compute the outputs of compositions when tables of values are given.